can have communication issues that, like I said, if when people have different behavioral styles or communication styles, I'm saying it can cause a lot of conflict, it can cause oh, irritation, yes. or mm-hmm. even at a minimum, I mean, it can cause a team to operate in silos and be like, yes. okay, I don't like that guy, I don't mm. like that gal, fine, whatever, I'll, I'll just tolerate them, I got to do my job, I got to work with them, whatever, mm-hmm. but I don't have to be the friend, I don't have to like them, I don't have to, and they just kind of wall themselves, oh, I'm going to do my job, they do their job, we come to the meeting, we report, we go about our business. But when you're talking about, like you said, you were saying, VPs on a leadership team, you need everybody really working together for that CEO to, to be able to get the kind of feedback and input and, and just drive the organization as a whole, not just as individual parts. And so you know, right. having everybody operating in silos is really, really not uh, the best thing you know, for an organization and like, right. the conflict that it can cause. And even if not just open conflict, but just that little nagging, gnawing irritation. Sure. Just well, doesn't people, do well. people don't want to uh, cooperate uh, or they're, suddenly they'll cooperate. But the fact there is that's not being productive in the long run. So. No, it's not. So one thing, I mean, that I know we love to do with our clients and, you know, you know, who want their board or the leadership team to kind of operate at a little higher level. You know, mm-hmm. we put together an assessment based workshop Yes. At, uh, called critical alignment. And that was one of the things we wanted to cover today because that is just a tool, not the only tool, mm-hmm. but it's a tool that we really like. And I like the component pieces of it. So whether you use that tool or not, there's some of the component pieces can actually help you with your own team and to be able to kind of understand them a little bit better. And I think be able to operate at a higher level and actually be able to bridge that performance gap with mm-hmm. your leadership team. So how, what have you found in your... Um, with some of your clients as far as doing that before we get into some of the particulars. Sure. Well, as far as uh, when we do something like that with the, the three ingredients we'll talk about today, the three uh, uh, parts of this process, certainly the behaviors, uh, which is going to help us understand each other better, how people do what they do. Uh, so that's critical because oftentimes people want to treat other people the way they want to be treated, or they expect other people to, to do things in a way that they do them. And when they don't, that's when we have this conflict that starts to come up. So if right from the get-go, something with the behaviors, when we're able to analyze each other's behaviors and understand how the behaviors typically work, the, the dominant behavioral styles, that goes a long way in helping start that communication process we want to help them with. Absolutely. It's, it's kind of like bridging the gap between not just in performance, but almost going from the golden rule where you want to treat others like you want to be treated, which mm-hmm. is a great place to start, which is better than just treating people like or, or, or you know there's yeah. me, there's a bad behavior in organizations so, i mean there it's is. uh so i mean you know that's a great start but it's almost you know one step closer towards i, I forget the the person that coined the term the platinum rule where you're treating others the way they want to be treated sure yeah tony so, uh tony alexandra there you go yes, Dr. Yes, Dr. Yes. Dr. Alexandra. yes and so when you can kind of bridge that little bit of a gap mm-hmm. that really helps increase the team performance when people are able to adapt to other people's style and the way they learn and the way they work and the way they communicate to really be able to be a lot more effective than what they do. Mm-hmm. So you're right. You mentioned about three different portions of kind of the way we structure this. And there's, uh, like I said, it's an assessment base, but it's three different portions of the assessment, but really three different portions of how we break it out. Yes. One, we have a behavioral portion. Mm-hmm. It's kind of the how we do what we do. We have mm-hmm. a portion called the driving forces or motivated portion. Which is really, you talk about discovering your why. This is really, really deep into the why behind you do what you do. Yeah, the motivation That's, for people doing what they do. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Why do you do what you do? What drives mm-hmm. you to do these things? Mm-hmm. And that is super powerful because if you're conflicting and you're going against someone's primary, what drives them to perform, and what it, it's yeah, it's bad. You're not going to get the performance out of them that you need to. Um, Absolutely. And, and Dave, we should mention that See, the behaviors is something we can see pretty much. It's kind of like looking at an iceberg. You can see it's uh, what is above the water is typically what we're calling the behaviors. It's pretty observable. Yeah. When we start getting into these other things like the driving forces, that's not above the water. You don't see that very cool. You need an assessment to, uh, to uncover that. So yeah, that's, you that's could, could, yeah, I was going to say, if you work with someone for long enough, you could pick mm-hmm. up enough traits when you learn about them to kind of make an educated guess. Mm-hmm. But you really don't, the, the cheat sheet way to do it is, like I said, to, to really that working for somebody or working with somebody for 5, 10, 15 years is 
to like I said, be able to use these assessment tools to be able to really dig down in a, in a timely fashion to be able to oh, do yeah. that. So that's really the why behind we do what we do. And then the last component of the assessment, which is not necessarily a component of what we use, in, we use it, go over to the workshop, but it's not as big of a component, is the kind of your skill-based, uh, strength-based competencies, you know, your uh-huh. people skills, your soft skills, some, some people call it. You leadership know, skills. Yeah, leadership, decision-making, critical thinking. Uh-huh. You know, it kind of identifies what you're really well developed at, what you can, you know, what you're moderately developed at, and then where you could stand to work. 